I was hoping today to talk a little bit about creativity. You know, a lot of people really struggle to give themselves permission to be creative. And reasonably so. I mean, we're all a little suspect of our own talent. And I remember uh, a story I came across in my early 20s that kind of meant a lot to me. I was really into Allen Ginsberg, and I was reading his poetry, and I was reading, uh, he did a lot of interviews. And uh, one time, William F. Buckley had this television program called The Firing Line. And Ginsberg went on there and sang a, a Hare Krishna song while playing the harmonium. You know, and he got back to New York to all his intelligentsia friends, and they all told him, "Did you know that everybody thinks you're an idiot? And the whole country's making fun of you. And uh, he said, that's my job. You know, I'm a poet, and I'm going to play the fool. Most people have to go to work all day long, and they come home, and they fight with their spouse, and they eat, and they like turn on the old boob tube, and somebody tries to sell them something. And I just screwed all that up. I went on and I sang about Krishna. And now they're sitting in bed and going, who, who, who's this stupid poet? And they can't fall asleep, right? And that's his job as a poet. And so I find that very liberating because I think that most of us really want to offer the world something of quality, something that the world will consider good or important. And that's really the enemy because it's not up to us whether what we do is any good. And if history's taught us anything, the world is an extremely unreliable critic. So you have to ask yourself, do you think human creativity matters? Well, hmm, most people don't spend a lot of time thinking about poetry, right? They have a life to live and they're not really that concerned with Allen Ginsberg's poems or anybody's poems until their father dies, they go to a funeral, you lose a child, um, somebody breaks your heart, they don't love you anymore, and all of a sudden you're desperate for making sense out of this life, and has anybody ever felt this bad before? How did they come out of this cloud? Or the inverse, something great. Um, you meet somebody and your heart explodes, you love them so much you can't even see straight. You know, you're dizzy, did anybody feel like this before? What is happening to me? And that's when art's not a luxury, it's actually sustenance. We need it. Okay, well, what is it? Human creativity is nature manifest in us. We look at the, um, oh, the Aurora Borealis, right? I did this movie called White Fang when I was a kid and we shot up in Alaska and you go out at night and the sky was like rippling with purple and pink and white. And it's the most beautiful thing I ever saw. It really looked like the sky was playing. Beautiful, go to Grand Canyon at sundown, it's beautiful. We know that's beautiful, but fall in love? Your lover's pretty beautiful. I have four kids, watching them play, watching them like pretend to be a butterfly or run around the house or doing anything, it, it, it's so beautiful. And I believe that we are here on this star in space to try to help one another, right? And first we have to survive, and then we have to thrive. And to thrive, to express ourselves, all right, well, here's the rub, we have to know ourselves. What do you love? And if you get close to what you love, who you are is revealed to you and it expands. We know this, the time of our life is so short and how we spend it, are we spending it doing what's important to us? Most of us not. I mean, it's hard, it's hard. The pull of habit is so huge. And that's what makes kids so beautifully creative, is that they don't, they don't have any habits and they don't care if they're any good or not, right? They're not, you know, they're not building a sandcastle going, I think I'm gonna be a really good sandcastle builder. You know, they just, they throw themselves at whatever project you put in front of them, dancing, doing a painting, you know, building something, any opportunity they have, they try to use it to impress upon you their individuality. Right? It's so beautiful. There's a thing that worries me sometimes whenever you talk about creativity, because it can have this kind of feel that it's just nice. You know, or it's warm, or it's something pleasant. It's not, it's vital. It's the way we heal each other. In singing our song, in telling our story, in inviting you to say, hey, listen to me, and I'll listen to you, we're starting a dialogue. You know? And when you do that, this healing happens. And we come out of our corners and we start to witness each other's common humanity. We start to assert it. And when we do that, 
really good things happen. So if you want to help your community, if you want to help your family, if you want to help your friends, you have to express yourself. And to express yourself, you have to know yourself. It's actually super easy. You just have to follow your love, right? There is no path. There's no path till you walk it. And you have to be willing to play the fool. So don't, you know, read the book that you should read. Read the book you want to read, right? Don't listen to the music that you used to like, you know? Take some time to listen to some new music. Take some time to talk to somebody that you don't normally talk to. I guarantee if you do that, you will feel foolish. That's the point. Play the fool.